Hello and welcome to this section of the tutorial where we're going to continue looking at financial calculations with the TI calculators and in this this chapter we're going to specifically look at what we call the time value of money. Uh, we all know that uh, as we take out loans for various things you know we're paying more than the cost of the item that's just how the world works so when you when you buy a house let's say your house costs a hundred thousand um, dollars you know and you take out a loan for 30 years you're going to pay a whole lot more than a hundred thousand dollars for that house of course the advantage to you is that you're doing it over 30 years that you can afford to make those payments whereas most people don't have a hundred thousand dollars laying around to pay cash for a house um, so the time value of money calculator here in the um, TI calculator lets you quickly 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 do these calculations and uh, you can do a lot of great things with it and really learn how different loan terms could really help you or hurt you. So in order to take a look at it, let's go in the apps menu. Under finance, the very first thing is TVM solver, time value of money. And I think this is eye opening for most people. Until you sit down and start playing around with loan numbers, um, you know, you really, it's hard to imagine how much money people pay for houses and cars when we take out long loans. So let's take a look at it. What we have in here is a bunch of variables. I'm going to explain what they all are. They're very easy to understand. Um, but the basic idea is you fill out what you know, and then the thing that you don't know, you put the cursor on that line, and then you hit the solve button, and then the calculator is going to try to solve for the variable that you that you have the cursor currently on. So as, a, as an example, let's say you're going to buy a house, and you're going to take out a 30-year mortgage. So 30 years times 12 months is 360 months. So you're going to pay 360 payments, and that's what N is equal to. And actually, I should have told you, I'll do this now. Before we jump into here too far, let me go out of here and go to the mode menu. When you're dealing with money, it's a very good idea to hit the float on two decimal places. And that way, everything's going to look like a nice um, dollar signs coming out of there. So we'll go back to the apps menu back to the finance menu and notice that our, our 360 is still there but everything has two decimal places so this is how many payments you have if you had a five-year car note it would be 60 payments so you would put 60 here so whatever the term is that you have however many checks you're gonna write over the entire life of the loan that's the number you put in there this number is the percentage rate interest so for this particular example let's choose 8% interest on a home uh, this this number here is this PV stands for present value and basically that's the value of the home that you're buying or if you're buying a car it's the value of the car so for now let's just put something uh, $250,000 you know you could put any number there if this were a car then maybe your your car is going to be you know $7,000 that you would put in there all right uh, monthly payment that's what I'm going to actually calculate first so we're not going to put anything there uh, FV is future value. I'll tell you about that later. Don't worry about that right now. It's pretty easy to understand, but it makes more sense after we do the calculation. The next one is P slash Y. It means payments per year. So it's just asking you, because the calculator has no idea what you're buying, you have to tell it, okay, you told it you're making 360 payments on the life of the loan, but you need to tell it how many payments in one year. Most people pay monthly, so this is going to be 12. This is going to be 12. Now just below it, there's a line that's C slash Y. This means compounding periods per year. So most of the time, if you're making 12 payments, your loan is going to be compounded monthly as well. So it's going to, the calculator notice automatically put a 12 there. I didn't even do that. That's an automatic thing. You can override that if you need to, but that's that's the basic idea. So I think now we're, we're pretty good to go. This, this tells you if you're making your payment at the end of the month or the beginning of the month, and you can change that as you need but for the purpose of teaching it's not that important so you put what you know in number of payments interest rate value of the home and how many payments per year and then if you want to calculate uh, the payment this is this is what your monthly payments going to be like if you're actually at a car dealership trying to figure out what's my monthly payment going to be you could whip this sucker out and figure it out uh, right away the way you figure this out you make sure the cursor is on this line then you hit alpha and the reason you hit alpha is because you have to hit the solve button right here and then notice that it pops out with a number there's a little square next to this which means the calculator has calculated the answer there as opposed to these other fields that don't have a square that's because you input these numbers yourself the calculator calculated this one and your payment is negative eighteen thirty four dollars and forty one cents per month 
The reason it's negative is because uh, this represents money leaving your wallet. So it's cash flow leaving you. So it's why it's negative. Um, all right, so this is your monthly payment. So you can play around with this. You could say, well, for a $250,000 house, this is going to be my payment. Well, what if my interest rate drops to 6%? What does that do? So I have to enter the new interest rate, and then I go uh, up to here to payment again, alpha solve, and instead of 1834, it's 1498. So you get you have less payment per month. If you can get a little bit less interest rate, uh, you can certainly uh, pay less per month, which is what most people are trying to do. Uh, now, another thing is um, the future value. This is what FV means. So you're making these payments, almost $1,500 a month, and you're doing it for 360 months. So if you go here and you calculate future value, this is going to calculate what is the future, um, the future value of, of basically of my loan here if I pay these payments out for 360 months. If I hit solve on this line, it's going to stay zero. But what if I go up here and I say, what about after only 10 months of paying? What if I put a 10 in here? Then if I go down here to future value, because this, this number here, this 1498, this is now fixed. This is, this is in the calculator as a variable. If I go to future value and solve now, this number is going to be $247,454. So what this means when you go and solve for future value is, if I start a loan for $250,000, at 6% interest and I'm making a monthly payment of this, then after 10 months I have paid down that loan so that the balance is basically this much money, $247,454. That's basically what it is. So you can also use this in the, um, in the positive sense if you're putting money in a CD or something. You could put the present value in there, you could put a uh, positive interest rate and then you could you, you would basically count, you would be calculating in that in instance what the bank is paying you uh, and you would also have a positive future future va uh, value here because your money would be growing, but in this case, you know your money your money isn't. So that's what that's doing right there. Um, now, one more thing I want to tell you is that uh, the calculator. Once you make these calculations, let's say you calculated the monthly payment, but you want to use that in another calculation, like on the stack here. You want to multiply it by five or something like that. So instead of typing the number in again, you can just go back to the finance menu and go down and you see right here TVM payment, TVM percent, TVM present value, future value and so on. If you hit TVM payment, it goes on the stack and you hit enter, then your number, your payment is automatically stored in this variable here. So I can I can literally take this guy and if I want to multiply by 5, let's say what what am I how many how much money am I going to be paying after 5 months? Then I can do that and I can work with it directly. So the secret if you want to call it that, is going into the finance menu, going into the solver, and typing in everything correctly, and then basically putting the variable, I mean the cursor on the variable you want. Let's change it back to 360. So we went back in here to the calculator and typed in 360 again, and we'll see that our payment is going to stay the same, because really nothing's changed, so $14.98 per month. Now what if you want to calculate what is the principal and interest that you've paid on this loan um, up to a certain date? Maybe you're curious, how much interest am I actually paying after a certain period of time? So if I quit here and I go back to the finance menu, whoops, wrong thing. If I go back to the in apps and finance and I scroll down past this a little bit and I'm going to find some two pretty interesting things. I have uh, this is the sum of the principal and the sum of the interest that I've paid on the loan. So it's, it's pretty enlightening to, to look at this. First, let's look at the interest. What if I want to look and say, okay, how much interest have I paid on this? Because no, your monthly payment, part of it goes to paying the principal, part of it goes to paying the interest. So in the end, you're paying a whole lot more money than, than um, you might guess. So what about how much interest am I going to pay after, after 10 months? Or let's say after the first 12 months. So what you do is you have to tell it between what two months you're talking about. So what about between the first 12 months, between month one and month 12? What is the total sum of all the interest I've paid? And the answer to that is $14,916. It's negative because I'm paying it out. Now, it's using all the variables that are already set up in your TVM solver. So whatever you typed in there, the interest rate, the number of payments, the value of the house, all that stuff is basically applying to this calculation 
as well. It's just going in and figuring this out. Let's go back and find out. I'll go second entry. Instead of, uh, instead of 1 to 12 months, let's see how much interest am I paying on the entire loan. 1 to 360 months. So this is going to add up all of the interest payments that I make for the entire loan. And the answer is $289,000. That is how much money I'm paying in interest. Now the home cost is only 250, so I'm actually paying more money in interest than I am just for the house. Um, so at this point, I'll I'll take I'll take it upon myself to show you that if you go back to the apps menu and go back to finance and scroll down again, then instead of um, instead of the uh, the uh, interest. I can look at how much money I've paid towards that principal from month one. Uh, you know, we can go to month one to ten, let's say. How much money, or actually, let's make it the same. Let's make it twelve. So between month one and twelve, I've only paid three thousand dollars toward the principal on this house. The way interest works for such a large purchase like a house is in the first few years, almost every dollar that you pay them is going into their pocket in the form of interest. Eventually, you're going to knock down the principal enough when you barely slowly, slowly pay it off so that the principal will come down enough and then you'll start to pay the house off in substantial margins toward the end of your of your house note uh, toward the end. But you could see that between months one and twelve, I paid three thousand dollars toward the value of the home I bought but I'm paying you know a huge amount more just in the pockets of the bank because they loan me the money now another thing you can do let's go and change this I'm just curious more than anything let's put this in here and let's put the sum of the principal 360 whoops 360 and close the parentheses off and you'll see that I've paid $250,000, which is exactly what I should have paid. So the sum of the principal that I paid over the entire term of the loan is the value of the house. So that, that checks out. Now, one more thing you can do by going in the apps menu. There's another interesting, cool thing. By going into right by sum of the interest is a, is a little function called balance. BAL number nine there so balance so what I do here is I put in the number of months I'm interested in and it's going to tell me how much money I owe on this house so if I look after you know one month you have to put it in terms of month when I put it in terms of one month I still owe almost the entire value of the house 249,000 but if I go in here and I look after 12 months and hit enter look at this I only paid just like a minute ago we, we saw that we only pay about three thousand dollars in toward the principal and that's roughly what we still owe. We've only paid three thousand dollars of it off but we owe everything else after an entire year of paying on this thing. Now if I go in if I want to look at um, let's say five years instead of typing in months I can just do five times twelve because I'm too lazy to type in sixty let's say and I hit enter then I still owe two hundred and thirty two thousand dollars on this two hundred fifty thousand dollar house after five entire years of paying on it. So it's very slow to be paid off in the beginning. Now, if you go in here and you type in five times, so it's a 30-year loan, let's say, let's, let's look at year number 20. Eventually, at year number 20, things start to come down a little bit, but look, I still owe, whoops, I did, I did the wrong thing there. I did the wrong thing there. Let me pull that back up. Let me go over here. It's not five times 20. It's, it's um, 20 is what I'm trying to do here, 20 years times 12 that would give me the number of months for 20 years out so that's what I'm trying to do I owe hundred and thirty five thousand dollars after 20 years that's how much I owe and of course just as a final check to make sure you know what you're doing here it was supposed to be a 30-year loan so if I put 30 in here I should do delete and insert 3 so 30-year loan 30 times 12 is gonna give me the number of months I should owe you know three bucks so the loans basically paid off um, so that's that's how you use this guy to evaluate mortgages. You go in here, you go to the finance menu, you input all of your information in the TVM solver, and then you have these little functions that you can use to calculate the principal, calculate the interest, calculate the balance. If you could get good at using this calculator, then I am absolutely convinced that you could walk into a car dealership and save a significant amount of money. I don't know how many times I have walked in and uh, they don't understand that I know a few things about math and so they'll try to convince you that something's cheaper but it's very easy to show that it's actually not cheaper and you could easily look at different interest rates different terms different down payments 
and figure out what is going to be the cheapest thing for you in the long run. And so that's a great introduction to using these, these functions in the calculator. I'm Jason. I hope you've learned something. I think it's, it's a great little section to, to really understand how money works. And uh, it's a great time saver as well.